Well, speaking of fun, happy places, we're introducing a new segment uh, into uh, our podcast. Oh, yes. Courtesy Perfect. of Barstool Sports. It's shout Ask out. the Internet. Yeah, shout oh. out K- KFC Radio. All these questions are would you rather, th- this section mm. are would you rather. So basically, I'm going to ask you both, and ju- uh, Todd will be the judge and arbiter of who he thinks is the best answer. <laughs> so okay. Todd, I need, I need you to collate got it. points. Okay, ready? Got it. Okay, so Great. would you rather sit down with your parents and watch every sexual encounter you've ever oh, had God. or sit by yourself to watch a sex tape of the night that they conceived you. Oh, that's horrible. So you either have to sit down with your parents and watch all the crazy shit that you've got no. up to, or you have to no. watch your parents smash. You can't, you have to choose one. Okay. 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 No. I'm going to choose. Jay Sean's Basement Banter. Welcome, everyone. It is Basement Banner. I am Jay Sean. I have my uh, two mateys with me. Woody. Woody, Adam. What's going on? And Toddy. Toddy and Woody. What's happening, boys? Chilling. How are you doing? Every fucking time. Every time. What's happening, boys? (laughs) Your silence. I I said hi earlier, so I was was throwing to Todd. I was being a good host. I was like, oh, thank you. Crap. Um, Anyway, we have an amazing guest on today's show. Um, We... You know, we all know her personally in different ways, um, but the world knows her as Kiana Lede, an American R&B singer, songwriter, and actress. Um, but to us, like I said, we like to call her our friend, Kiana Kiki. What's happening, love? Hey! Oh! Whoa! We got fancy there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. Fa- you need to play that after loud. every take. I'll d- everyone. Yeah. yeah. All right. Everyone. It's on the top. I need back. a cheer. Yeah, yeah, we need some cheers, actually. Yes. That would be nice. Some claps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can yeah. work on those. Let's put mm-hmm. that in the soundboard. How are we doing, Kiana? I'm doing good. How about you? I like your hair a lot. Mm. Thank you so much. Yes, Feeling the see. vibes. Yeah. New for hair, new bitch. Ooh. I am. Um, everyone keeps calling me out. Feel? Is that how you feel, though? Really, though, actually. Does yes. it have an effect on your personality? It does. Yeah, for sure it does. Like, it's, it's not really, it has an effect on my personality. My hair is reflecting how I feel on the inside. So if I feel like I felt trapped with my hair before, like mm. I remember when I was doing braids, there was a time where I was like, I need to get out of these braids. It doesn't feel like me anymore. I feel like this is like two years ago, Kiana, this is not me anymore. What am I going to mm. do next? Mm. I can understand that. And mm. I can also understand it like actually physically feeling quite, like you can't actually let your hair down. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying though? Thing. And you feel like more wild and do you feel more wild and free now? I mean, these are tapings, so nah. Oh, you didn't need to tell people. It's fine. You could have just gone. Oh, I don't care. Yeah. Like I yeah. like telling people cause I'm like, yeah. I paid for it. It's still mine. Yeah. Yes, girl. Well, they look good. But it's also like yeah. unrealistic. My hair doesn't grow this fast. You know, like it was like one night it was like yeah. this and the next night it was like this. Breaking, so. Just breaking all illusions, all sorts of illusions. Smoke and now. mirrors just falling. Yeah, smoke and just Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, boys. That's all right. <laughs> um, I actually understand what you're saying in a weird way because I look back at some of the pictures of me when I had a shaved head. Remember when you met me, Kiana, and I had a shaved head yeah. and all that? and beard and stuff. And I just feel like it was a very hard look and that necessarily doesn't go with my personality because my personality is light and silly and fun. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? So I can understand. So let's talk about you and your personality at the moment with this wild, beautiful hair. How, we, how do you, uh, who is Kiki right now? I mean, Kiki right now is just, Corona Kiki is a different kind of Kiki because I'm mm. just trying to get through some shit. Like, Mm. I'm just trying to, I feel like I'm a lot more focused on what I need in my life. And I'm actually working a lot on communication, which is very, very hard for me. Because before, if I had a problem, if I had something I wanted to express, I would not, I would not let it out. Like, I would just like sit with it until it blew up. And then I would blow up on something random or just like by myself or be super hard on myself. I would never actually express my emotions. And now mm. this year, for the last two years, I've really been working on it. But this year, especially, it's like we only have so many interactions with people. So the interactions mm. that we have have to be filled with meaningful communication. Mm. And that's just something that I'm really focused on right now. So yeah, I love that's that. Kiki. No, I think that's really, really important and special because I was talking to my friend about this the other day. Um, and by the way, I was telling Ava about this. You know that I actually 
told Ava this. I said, you know, Ava has this interesting personality trait that I wouldn't have expected her to have. She has this stubborn, small, stubborn, slight, proud. So it's not proud. It's more stubborn than anything. Right. Mm. And you know, like when they say, you know, you cut your nose, spite your face kind of thing. Is that the right the expression? Spite it your is. nose, cut your Yeah. Right. Never heard that before. Well, it's an English thing. <laughs> is it, an, it is an English thing, isn't it? Yeah. Don't cut your but, nose off to spite your face. Basically means don't, don't sabotage yourself. Oh. Uh. To, just to prove a point. Yeah. So, for example, um, I could say Ava might be like, Daddy, 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 remember we said we're going to do crafts right now? And I was like, well, babe, I can't do it right now. I'm in the middle of something. Let's do it in, in an hour. You know what? It's all right. I actually don't want to do it anymore. So I'm like, you can wait an hour. No, you know what? It's fine. It's cool. And there's this... <laughs> so then I have to explain to her, listen to me. This is the core. What's going to happen due to what you said is this. You are not going to get to do the activity you've been looking forward, forward to for the whole day. Okay, you are going to get more upset than you think you are now. So what I would, and you explain these things mm, through. Mm, mm. And again, it was just a weird thing, but communication is so important. So I've always, I've never understood this, Kiana. Maybe you can help me. Where does that get you by not communicating, by not telling people? Do you feel like you're showing weakness if you show signs, of, if you tell them how you're really feeling? Yeah, I feel like it. Get, it's, it's, presenting an opportunity to be let down or for someone to have control over your emotions, which is very scary. Like I'm a person who's had to have, con why does Siri want to just come and show up? Um, Cause you said scary I'm, that she's listening. Yeah. She thought you said Siri. I can't even say it again or else she's going to come pop back up. Wow. Um, yeah. I, I've, I'm a person who likes to have control over my own emotions. So mm -hmm. it's very, Freaky, mm -hmm. nerve wracking. <laughs> nerve wracking. Fuck there you, you. go. That's, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, to present those emotions, those true emotions. And sometimes I used to like. I still do this sometimes. I'm not perfect, but like sometimes I would just like beat around the bush. Why? Sometimes I just beat around the bush, mm -hmm. um, so that I feel like people are gathering what I'm saying rather than just understanding what I'm saying. And it's just. It's not a fair expectation to put on yourself or on another person because A, you're not being fulfilled. Your needs aren't being fulfilled. And B, the relationship isn't serving you at all. Like what is the point of having that person in your life if you can't fully communicate with them about each other's needs? And the other thing is that that person probably needs something from you too. You guys can share those experiences and share how to share and learn how to grow together, no matter what the relationship is. But all of those things go out the window when you don't express what you need or want. I've always thought it's really interesting. Uh, Adam, we have had many conversations about that. You know, friendships, relationships, whatever it is, it's only based on literally, if I don't tell you, yo, Adam, this is specifically what I needed from you and you mm. have to do the guesswork, Mm. You, we, 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 like you just said, Keanu, it's not serving either of us, but sometimes it might hurt just that little bit. If you just say directly, just get it out. It's probably better just, you know, suck it up, get it out quickly. At least you both know where you stand rather than, I don't know. I, I'm glad, either way, I'm glad that you're working on, on that. And I'm glad that that's something that hopefully makes you feel better Definitely. Um, than, than braided Kiki. Actually, <laughs> sp sp speaking of that, actually, just sorry, just to jump ahead. Obviously you said, you know, this is coronavirus Kiki, the new hairstyle. Obviously, you know, you had an album come out in the midst of coronavirus. Yeah. I remember we all had a little Zoom conference thing thinking, oh, this would be over in two months and we got to have the real thing. And yeah. uh, obviously that didn't work out uh, for, <laughs> for many reasons. And then obviously in the interim, you've, you've made a, a new deluxe album and also you currently <clears throat> feature on the, you know, the Amazon holiday special you're doing at the moment. What is uh, it like being a musical artist in the midst of coronavirus at the moment? It's so weird. There's parts of it that are great. Um, like all the stressful parts are a little bit less stressful because I don't have to go anywhere to do them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's also a little bit more stressful in a weird way because like we would be doing this in person if it wasn't 
quarantine, yeah. but mm. I'm not good at doing these over the computer. I might be fooling you now, but I like really hate doing these over the computer. No, <laughs> because I'm a very big like, energy eye person. Contact? No, yeah. I hate it. <laughs> I, I'd rather have forced eye contact in real life. Mm-hmm. I'm just like a big energy person and I like to like feed off of the energy in the room and like the people mm-hmm. around me. And I like making people smile and I feel like I can't do that as much if I'm like trapped behind a screen. Like it just I know exactly so what you're saying. Yeah. I know but exactly. But it is... It also is like such a good thing because the age of technology is never going away. Like we're going to be in this forever and we have to learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. And I know that I've gotten through a lot of, um, I guess, grown, grown past a lot of anxieties that I've had in regards to technology and social media and like Zoom and shit. So as much as this sucks, it's also like, cool and growth in a weird way Mm -hmm. um so that part is like there's good and bad parts but i think the the most disappointing part of dropping an album and like being an upcoming artist during quarantine is that i can't see my fans like i really love performing and meeting all of my fans and that Mm. just like that's the reason that i make music is to like see that how it's people are moved by it yeah Mm. And when I can't do that face to face, it makes me kind of sad. But also at the same time, I know that their experience is great because if I do an Instagram live or a concert on Amazon or whatever I do, yeah. everyone gets a front row seat. So it's actually I want to talk great. About, I do definitely want to talk about that afterwards, the Amazon thing, especially. But um, <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day. Last, this time last year, I was in Australia doing a tour. Um, and Southeast Asia and we do meet and greets after each uh, show and (laughs) I've become so used to as we all have over this year of just not touching people Mm. that the thought that you were just we would hug random people sweating all over us okay and I'm sure you're like me where you hug every person that comes in the room like you're like around them touching them yeah no isn't that <laughs> isn't nuts, it fucked though? up no, that no, I watch yeah. I watch movies now yes, and when people do. get into like buses or whatever I'm like Yo! no <laughs> you can never do that now I know it's, no way I, I know oh god so actually, weird actually to that point Jay I don't know if you want to share this story I, uh, I know simply of one I've been at some of your meet and greets when you know, Keanu you meet your fans and you know not that uh, <clears throat> you know it's not that you ever ask for these gifts but your fans bring you these incredible gifts um, and handmade things and stuff for Boba Bear and fucking tapatio sauce <laughs> with your face on it just like things that they just picked up <clears throat> randomly for interviews uh, for both of you both singers both artists uh, what have been the some of the standout uh, gifts that you've been given Jay you know the one I want to ask is but I don't know if you want to share that story but uh, there's there's several uh, uh, ones that uh, stick out to mind. so mm. what, what are some of your standout meet and greet moments? I want to hear ba- bad and good yeah oh you want to hear mine bad mm. and good uh Start with good, because that was a positivity oh. first. Okay, good. There was It's actually in one of the vlogs, um, but it was a bag full of goodies that Daisha got me. That's like one of my like Shout out to fans and one of my friends. Shout out yep. to Daish. Um, but she got me like this journal that I literally use. Wait, I'm going to grab it really fast. Cause yeah. yeah, yeah. This is my journal that she made me. <gasps> and it oh, says, Kiana, a selfless Aries. Shout Beautiful. out Aries. Right here, you Shout know out it. to Aries. Aries game. Ooh, Toddy. Um, oh, wow. Well, I'm not, I'm the only one. Jeez, yeah, I'm you're the only one that's not an Aries. Yeah. All right. Um, so she gave me a whole bag full of stuff and like there was pencils that matched the journal and they all said like different catchphrases that I say, like the crazy little mm-hmm. like, yeah, daddy and shit. Um, <laughs> and it was really, really cute. It was just, there. I've never been given a gift that had so much thought in it put into it by anyone ever in my life so it was really nice girls are very thoughtful i have noticed this across the board when it comes to gifts the thought that girls put into this kind of stuff compared Mm -hmm. to us we're so shit we probably you guys need to be better I think for us, we're like, well, I fucking spent a thousand dollars on her fucking shoes. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Honestly, like for me, I would have preferred like a forty dollars shoes. But like when you remembered, I said I liked them from four years ago. That would have meant more to me. Can I can honestly? I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make, make a make a suggestion. Whenever I date anyone, 
and that shit comes up, I have a note in my phone where they just mention stuff. They're like, oh, I, I really like that yeah. stuff. I'm like, okay, I do that too. Like, yeah, yeah. Because then you I remember that, that shit, you know? Yeah. So. I yeah. do that as well now. But yeah. see, that's true, right? Like, so that is, that's a nice thoughtful gift. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was um, really sweet. The scariest one was just um, someone gave me a, I don't know what it's called, like a rendering of a shoe. A rendering of a shoe? It was as like it, a, I don't know if it's called rendering. Like a 3D it, printing of a shoe? No, no. It was like a architectural drawing of a shoe and how a shoe is made. Okay. And they put Why? it in a manila folder and it had my name on it. And they said, I, this is for you. Okay. Said, Thank you <laughs> so much. A weird foot fetish. Mm, I'm guessing. Thing going oh, on. that's probably what it is. And it's probably a foot fetish thing. And they like imagining you with the shoe on and could be made worse. a shoe for your foot. And wow. I could have, could have had you. Well, my feet are not cute. So they're going to be very disappointed. <laughs> well, you should have, you should have just, wait, 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 who's this person? It's you, Jay. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking what would be funny. So it's, it's actually a shoe, a design of a shoe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay, that's a little. But it had like the layers. Like it was like it was an extruded, was separated. Like and of, yeah. it was explaining each part of the shoe. I'm going to be honest, that's a crap present. That is it, shit. Yeah. It was I would have been really interesting. Yeah. I've been very confused. Could be it could be in a box, and here's where the shackles go. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like, like, okay, thanks. That would have been really exciting for me, honestly. I would have been like, how did they oh, really? know? <laughs> that is very, very weird. Okay. What about you, Jen? Um, uh, I think the thoughtful ones is like, um, you know, well, just the really nice ones are they know that I'm into my clones. Right. Because so sometimes they go out there and they'll like I've literally received colognes that I've never had before. And mm. I'm like, shit, that's actually a bomb smell. Like, I like that. So that's really nice. Although sometimes I'll be honest with you, it's kind of dangerous because if it's not sealed in the box, you don't know, you what, don't know what, what it is, is in that box. Yeah, exactly. and, 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 yeah. Yeah. Spray that on your skin. Yeah, so I have, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It could easily be. Yeah. So um, I've had that. I've had like nice things for the kids. Right. They'll buy things for Tara. Hmm like that um but yeah i've definitely had some some uh, some interesting uh, weird weird gifts from fans but uh, fans kiana what you were talking about during this pandemic um i've had to do a few i'm sure as, as you have been approached online concerts right and i found it the most weirdest shit in the world because so i'm trying weird. to give my energy to this one camera and there's just me in the room Mm -hmm. And my a lot of my songs are up tempo. At least you can sit on a stool and sing your fucking ass off. But a lot of my stuff is just going. Come on, come on, guys! Yeah, <laughs> man, <laughs> go crazy! And I'm just like, fuck! I feel like a fucking idiot. <sighs> what about you? Tell me your experience of like the Amazon Music thing. How was that? The Amazon Music thing was cool. It was a little freaky just because it made COVID feel more real to me because we were pretending like we were allowed. We were allowed. It was legal. But like we were pretending like it was normal to film, but there was all of these extra restrictions. And like, this is the first time I'm really performing the songs in front of people outside of my mm. living room. This is the first time that I'm like in a venue after like a year of perform, almost a year of not mm. performing in a venue mm. um, and filming it. So it was already a little nerve wracking. And then to add all of like the pressure and the um, like the sensitivity of that, that people were doing or that people were having on set around COVID, which was great, but it was also like a whole nother amount of pressure. Mm. It was scary, but it was great. Uh, I mean, like there was fake snow in my face. I was like, this right. is cool. It looked awesome. It sounded it looked too. Thank you. Nope. I was really we... nervous about that, honestly, because I thought I was in second chances. I literally say a cuss word every line. And I was like, I'm going to they're going to kick me out. Like, <laughs> they're not going to let me perform <laughs> because I say fuck every two seconds. Right. But I did it. It was successful. And where can That's people a... find it? Um, on Amazon. Amazon on Amazon Prime. Prime. Front page. I saw it last <laughs> night. Yeah. Pam, Pam, Pam. That's yeah, amazing. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, Todd, where's the horn? Yeah, come on. That's so fun. It's too man. late now. That's... Now it's going to feel this facetious. Yeah. All yeah, right. <laughs> um, that, that's, that's fun, man. I, I, I think, you know, there is something new 
that we're learning, like you said. Um, we could sit here and just fucking moan, couldn't we? We could just yeah. moan for a whole year, but we're, we're adapting, you know. Today uh, is Ava, well, Sunday is Ava's birthday. And oh. just before this, we had her, she hasn't seen her school friends all year. She's been virtual school, like homeschooling. Oh. So she hasn't seen them in person. So we had a table out in our driveway and we had cupcakes and we had balloons and we had like, oh. you know, all this thing. And her friends came by, drove by and came into the driveway. Everyone's got a mask on. They're not, they're not hugging, but it's like, hi. And it did a little bit break my heart. So I was like, no, nah, you guys should be just hugging each other. And, yeah. But at the same time, at least we're adapting. We're doing something, we're, you yeah. know. And, and I think that that's more important uh, than sort of just, well, for, just for our health and our safety, our, our mind space, you know. Uh, there's, I was thinking about, there's, there was a, probably a couple of months during this pandemic, I think, for all of us, where we had to just put on such a brave face and pretend that it wasn't depressing the shit out of us. Mm. Right. You know, and, mm. and I think we all did. Well, maybe some of us drank too much. Maybe some of us ate too much. Maybe some of us slept in too much. But whatever it is, it definitely affected us all as human beings. How did oh, you, yeah. and, and I want to talk about you, and I don't want to talk about the pandemic. I want to talk about you and your sort of headspace because I know that this is something that's really, uh, you know, it's something that's so special. You have this special ability to be able to connect with your fans and talk about things that are uh, very personal openly uh, with them. So I would like, if you don't mind to, to be able to talk a little bit about that and about, um, you know, your, how do you keep yourself in a good mental space? Mm. I mean, it's As definitely, uh, it's definitely a daily struggle, um, daily challenge. I think the things that, I mean, the great thing about this time in 2020 is that I'm able to take the time that I need to really get like a regimen, understand what like triggers me and what is good for me and what times I need to do things and experiment because I'm at home. Mm, mm. The things that have been working for me, and I'm still like building this process and building this regimen, but I have been focused on my eating patterns and um i drink shroom tea every three days i microdose shrooms mm. and yeah. it's great i was recently diagnosed with bipolar disorder and i didn't know i always thought like oh my god i'm just like really extreme like i'm just like i'm just an extreme person i'm just too much mm -hmm. and that's just what it is mm -hmm. and then i realized that it's actually a thing like it's actually wow. a chemical imbalance in my brain and i was really afraid of taking prescription medication oh yeah. Uh -huh. yeah i grew up in a house where like we were barely allowed to take tylenol and that was like if we were dying <laughs> we were gonna take tylenol if we were dying and it wasn't even the, like a lot in amount it was like two <laughs> like a half of a pill right. um so i went on a search to find other um resources that would help me besides just prescription medication That's and cool. that has really been helpful and i also like i can't just do that like there's it's a it's a slew of things that i have to do daily to make sure that i'm like at a level place um so it's that it's the meditation apps like calm and breathe mm -hmm. those are great like i set aside a time in my day and this was prescribed by my therapist who i see once a week which is also another really big important Same. thing Yes. <laughs> Everybody needs to be talking about therapists. I know that like not everyone can afford them and it's really fucked up. Like it should be mm. part of our like yeah. most basic healthcare it's, that's plan. So interesting, yeah. Because it's like a broken if you're having yeah. a chemical imbalance and or you don't know, it's like fucking Absolutely. having a broken nose and not knowing. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so more important, I think. That's some deep shit though. I don't mean to cut you off. We go no. to a doctor cause we break our finger and they, they, he fix it for us. We go and we, you know, we cut our knee and they'll put a bandage over it. But so many of us, if not a majority of us are broken mm, here. In some form, yeah, in mm -hmm. some form. Up here in our, in, 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 in our headspace. And yet, oh no, let's not talk about that. Oh no, let's hide that. Oh no, let's not get you help for that. Or if we, you are going to get help, it's going to cost you a shit ton of money. Or we're just going to put you on drugs and pretend that that's the solution. Mm. And, and yet that's the part that needs healing for, mm. for so many of us. Especially this year. Yeah. 
especially this you know? year. The crazy thing is we're all going through the same trauma right now. So that's kind of unifying. Um, unifying. Yeah. And it makes you feel a little less alone. And I think that's why we felt this like we've been on this journey as a world and especially with social media. That's one of the great things about social media. We've been on this journey of being more open and f- learning about um about mental health and Mm. this year because we've all been unified by the same tragedy and trauma we've been able to talk about it even more and be more open yeah Yeah. speaking of this year you got into uh you were talking about having time to do the things that uh, you otherwise wouldn't do you got you were part of the i'm a new voter initiative and i I know from obviously speaking to you personally and and you know from your social media that you became very uh politically and actively involved how was that for you and um uh, yeah, I presume this was the first time you voted in a in a in a national election. Would that be the case? Yeah, I voted in midterms the year before, um, but it also like it, it was midterms, which are great. But I felt guilty that I didn't vote for the presidential election mm-hmm. the term before that. Um, I really just started it because I realized when I did vote during midterms, I had no idea what I was doing. I was literally just picking people that sounded the most like me that sounded black or Mm. Mexican. And that was it. Like Mm. Mm. I was like, these people are probably going to have my needs in their Mm. mind, in the forefront of their mind. They're going to fight for me. So, but that wasn't the case. Like Mm. you'd be surprised if you actually look up who Mm. these people are, what their parties are and what their beliefs are within that party. So I realized I didn't know anything and it was really hard to find the information. So I started thinking about like, maybe I should do an easy voter guide. Uh, I am a voter has really great content on Instagram. They make things really easy. I've learned a lot from just looking at their Instagram page. And I also uh, was living in between three different states. I was, I had an Arizona driver's license. I was filming a show in New Orleans and I was also living in LA um, when Donald Trump got elected and it made it very difficult for me to get a ballot. I struggled to get an absentee ballot. It never came in the mail. And then I started thinking like how many people that probably happened to, how many kids that were like off to college and like had their other ID or maybe they were on holiday in for Christmas and whatever stay or back at home and they just never received it. And that's a lot of new voters, like a lot of really young people that have progressive thinking, which I would like to see in our office, obviously. So I was just like, how can I make this better? I, every, like I said, everything is really extreme for me. So it's not ever just about me. I'm like, how can we fix the world? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I started thinking about it. And then I reached out to I Am A Voter and um, Playbook. And we started talking about different things we could do. And we basically just were like, let's just get a bunch of people that work for the government or just like a bunch of smart people that know kind of about voting and spread the information and really user friendly content and in just really plain language mm-hmm. because it's also voting is a very classist system. Like Cardi B is one of the smartest people in the world and she doesn't use like words that have a thousand letters in them. And mm-hmm. she's like, people like think Adam. I'm stupid, even though I know. <laughs> <laughs> she's like even though i say bitch and shit i still uh, know about my taxes and uh, i know about the presidency and i know about all this stuff so yeah. um i just wanted to make it more accessible for people and learn as well as teach and that's great by the information i think that's really nice because i think you know in the beginning when we were artists you know obviously i'm i've been doing it for probably as long as you've been alive and uh for me <laughs> when i was for us, it was always just about the music in the beginning, and it was just about our album, and it was, oh, buy my single, and this, that, and the other. And I feel like as time has progressed, especially this new generation, have become a lot more um, involved in social issues and stuff outside of just music and outside of just my song. And I think actually that's brilliant because you know what really drives me crazy now? And the reason I say this is because I've been doing this podcast for so long. We've had so many different guests and what, why this is so much more fun for us is Anytime it was this before, it was like, so what was the inspiration behind your song? So what was the, and I was like, fuck, all I ever do is talk about music. Mm. That's all I do, because that's all you ask. You want to know, when did I write this song? When do I get my inspiration? Who am I going to collaborate with next? Tell us Mm. about your album. Mm. So it was never about, tell me about you. Mm. 
Tell me about you as Actually, a Actually, can I ask you both questions right. in, that, in that regard? Actually, Jay, can you mm. carry on with that conversation? Obviously, yeah. going back down to uh, to voting and, 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 and public figures, we now have the first uh south asian about to, to take uh take office uh and we have the first black woman to be a vice president individually based on your cultural her heritage what does that mean for both you Je first um yeah i mean look at the end of the day i i look at it as this as my whole career i have tried so hard to represent what was such a niche community in the mainstream it was so tiny i was like literally the first um you know, person uh, South Asian to make it mainstream in music. And how long has that been going? And to this day, we're still, I'm still kind of look, looking around, slim pickings everywhere. And I'm going, damn, is this, uh, there's like, we're the second largest population on planet Earth. And really, you can't find more than a handful of South Asians to be in the mainstream music industry. So it was insane for me that representation. So now we've got representation, the highest platform in the world, really. Um, and it's just a lot more eyes and ears on our community who, who I feel like for the longest time have just been, you know, oh, yeah, those, yeah. And, and I just, you know, that makes me happy. And also I think about Ava as a girl, South Asian girl mixed, you know, um, and what that will mean for her and her aspirations and how she decides to look at the world and its opportunities, you know? What about yourself, Kiki? And obviously going back to that same question, but intrinsically linked in with like, you know, BLM, that was something that was a huge part, a topic of social conversation this year and a cause very close and near and dear to your heart. Like how mm. do those two things marry up? And, and yeah, again, what does it mean for you that in, in some ways, you know, the, the voting platform that you were championing was successful that, you know, we, we got, sort of what we wanted like what, what does mm. that mean to you yeah i mean i think just like mental health like um <laughs> it's a daily battle it's something that we're gonna have to fight and it takes a lot of groundwork and it takes us doing the work every single day like just because kamala harris is is the vice president it mm. doesn't really mean that black lives matter one you know mm. like mm. and we might not agree with everything that she says it, we might not agree i mean we're me and my friends have said we're settling for Biden, you know, but at the end of the day, I think the really important thing is exactly what Jay said. Representation matters. It's very important. Like seeing someone that looks like me in the yeah. office means that it's somewhat possible and the possibilities are just um, expanding for me and for if I choose to have children, my children and for my sisters and for, um, people of color and black people in general. <clears throat> but I think on, on going off what you're saying, it's not just even like um, possibilities. It's more like uh, <laughs> the only other time they saw us. So I'm talking about like South Asians now, let's say in, in mainstream, the depiction of us was almost so insulting. We were there. Hello, where do you like to go, please, sir? In the cab. And it's like seven ninety nine in seven eleven, And it was almost like we were a joke. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, oh, fuck me. Well, shit, damn. Okay, uh, I didn't really realize all of this. I was so oblivious to this. I wasn't educated on all of this. And I hope in a way that that embarrassed a lot of people. The same people who I had to try to, you know, as I was coming up, educate. And the flippant comments that they thought was funny and okay to say, which is actually extremely racist, mm. in interviews, I would be there and they were like, yo, man, tell me where you're from. And I'm like, I'm Indian. They're like, really? I thought you were an Arab. And I'm like, different things. Really? You <laughs> sound the same to me. You look the same to me. And I'm like, really? You're going to say that? Mm. And if that was flipped around and it was in any other race, it would mm. be an uproar. But when it comes to me, it was okay, you know, oh, you're all the same. And now I don't think you can get away with comments like that. I don't think you can get away with behavior like that yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and even thought process like that. So I think for that, I think we all needed to be a little bit more woke and this kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. kind of did that for us. Woke up, you know? yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. but um, Kiana, I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier about the, the, you know, this, you said like how this is awkward for you, the Zooms and stuff, but, and I mm -hmm. totally get that because you, you had to do a, shit ton of these for your album um, PR and I want to know because I know you on a personal level as well but I want to know what percentage of you as a human being as Kiana um, comes out when you're doing 
press interviews for your music? Mm. I think it depends on the interviewer for me. Like I mm-hmm. feed off of, like I said, I feed off of people's energy. I'm a very reactive person when it comes to like meeting new people. And I feel like I'm meeting new people every time I do interviews. So it's, mm. it's like I'm giving a first impression, but also at the same time for the whole world. And it's like kind of overwhelming. Um, when I'm doing them, it is on average, I want to say 55%. Mm. So you're saying what you Maybe think they want to hear? It's just like most of, like you said, like most of the well, questions are information. The same questions. It's the same. I'm offering right. the same information because they're asking yeah. the same questions, <laughs> right. and I don't. I'm not like a person who's like can pretend to get excited to answer right. your same question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just not that person. I've never been that person. Yeah. So, and also like it's kind of it's kind of a personal thing for me too because I grew up doing pageants and I never want to like answer questions fake. Like I didn't even do that in fucking pageants. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, my yeah. mom would get so mad at me. My pageant coach would get so mad at me. So, um yeah, I'm I'm just not that person. But, you know, there are those amazing interviews and those amazing radio personalities that mm. um have a lot to ask and really like take their time and do their job and like study and Mm. want to know more about you and want to offer new information about you to the world, which is what I love. Yeah. Yeah. I think going off of what you said on pageants is really hilarious because in the year 2020 now, or at least now in this, this time and age, the, (laughs) the cliche industry standard answer has become so off putting because we're all like, you're fake, man. We can see it. Stop it. Answer properly and say, tell me who the fuck you are, because I might just fuck with you if you say the right thing, like something that connects with me. Mm. If it really connects mm-hmm. with me, I might actually like you more. I might actually think your music sucks. This has been like, not you, obviously. I'm talking about like, <laughs> say, an artist who, whose music I might not think is amazing, but I, but I happen to catch him on an interview or and I'd be like, He's a fucking cool ass dude. This guy actually, mm. I'm, like, I like this guy. I might give his music right. another go, mm. you know? And I think that has its personality. We were told when we came up as, as, as at, least, at least I was, mm. don't say you have a girlfriend. Don't say you have a, because oh, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, no, like it's how, are they not going to listen to my music? illusion. <laughs> yeah. Are they not going to listen to my music? Cause they find out I've got a girlfriend. Is that really how fickle this is? Right. Wait, hold on. Who sings this? Jay Sean. I really love this song. Wait, I need to know. Does he have a girlfriend, wife, kids? Yes. Uh, oh, fuck, fuck his song then. Like, yeah. it, it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that yeah. used to be the narrative. I was, you know? Yeah, and I was coming. I, I was coming into the industry as that was kind of dwindling a little bit, which mm-hmm. was a really weird time because social media was starting to climb. It yeah. was starting to become a, a serious tool that you use as an artist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was also still a little bit of those old industry, uh, like tricks. Yes. That were, that I think we were trying to shed, but it was really confusing to do. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of, a lot of time and work, but it's funny because like I, I am 23. So when it was, Mm -hmm. When I was kind of battling those things, Mm. I was like, but this is how you do it. Because everyone my age is talking about this and blah, blah, blah. And it was just such a, it was like, it was like, Mm -hmm. you know, fighting against you. It was very conflicting. Mm. Um, But now we're at a time where everyone's doing it. So that's nice. Um, What makes you, what makes you the happiest about your, what you do for a job? And do you even look at it as a job? I definitely look at it as a job at this point. You do? I mean, yeah, I've been doing this since I was 15. It's full, full time. So it's, your life. Wow. it's almost 10 years. Yeah. It's eight years. Is that the right Not math? Crazy. I'm bad at math, yes. which is why I sing. That is correct. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for eight years. That's the title and... of the podcast, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm, cra- I'm shit at maths, which is why I That's sing. That's why I sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's been eight years of just like grind and and the reason it feels more like a job is because i think as r&b artists and especially as a black woman we don't get the credit that we deserve 
and our job is 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 less rewarding than a lot of other things in life. now are you talking about niches or are you talking about s- s- gender because i know of course we can talk about the grammy nominations which mm-hmm. was you know i mean no it's single all, woman getting it's which is fucking it. crazy insanity yeah 14 I mean, it all goes together 14 number one r&b albums and nine of which were by females and not one nomination but i'm gonna be honest with you and look i have my opinions on this do you care about awards do you care about awards shows do you care do you think they're all fair or do you think they maybe might be full of shit and nominations (laughs) might be decided by a bunch of people who it's not the people's choice is it Mm. apart from Mm. the people's choice awards Mm. so does it really matter I'm asking you. Um, I, opinion, I don't. Yeah. I don't think it really matters in the grand scheme of things. Nothing really matters. Like really. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny? <laughs> but, <It's so> true. <laughs> but, um. And sorry, let me just clarify before you answer. I mean, to you personally. I don't mean yeah. to the game, because of course, to the game, yeah, of course, right. the it does. Yeah, you need that acknowledgement. To the game, it matters. Well. Yeah, exactly. To me right. personally, um like a lot of other artists, it was my dream to win a Grammy. It was my dream to win the awards. Like, that's just what you see when you're a kid. You yeah. see all the shows and you're like, if you're doing good, you get a trophy. You're and that's that also what we're taught. Laura. If you're doing yeah. good, you get yes. an A plus. If you're doing good, you get the honor roll certificate. If you're, that's just what we're taught. We are a reward based society. And so mm. to not ever see that reward um, or at least be acknowledged for something good on a level that is so pre- seen as so prestigious from the world um, and was prestigious from the industry. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. No, it is. And I just want to look at people tune in, right? People who aren't into the music industry will still go, it's the Grammys. Let's watch this. And that's their yeah. time where they, you know, make their opinions yeah. on who's. But you, ca- carry on. Uh, what you One thing you just said, though, is so... It struck a chord with me, man. And it's to the day, it's how I live. We're a reward-based society, but yet that is the very reason why we are so mentally damaged. If Mm. we think we're doing our best and we think we're trying our hardest, but this asshole who sits in Texas with four other buddies of his or somewhere is the one who's handing out these trophies, doesn't happen to think I did good enough. Does it mean I didn't do good enough really though? Does it really mean that? Yeah. Right. Does exactly. it really mean, and should that make me and depressed? That is, should that make me judge me? Right. And that validation within yourself is, right. is... It's so hard, though. It's so hard, especially as artists. I'm sure you understand. You live this. Mm. I mean, we said one of the best things about making music is to make other people feel things and feel happy and to see right. our fans feel things. So when that um, validation is being taken away... And it feels like it's very personal. Like it feels like it's coming from your peers and from the labels and from the people who are supposed to be like loving and paying attention to music. But it's not. And that's what I'm saying. It's really not. It's really not. So when you understand that. it does feel personal. Right. So that's why when you understand that, that it's actually not your peers, it's not your friends, it's not your fans who are deciding whether you're good enough to get a nomination for an award. It's not, it's not those people. Who is it? So, I don't know this because in the, in my field it's the Academy and you have to be an Academy member. Is it the same? Right. as same. the Grammy winner same. to to. Okay. It's the same. Not a winner, but it's um, the same. Yeah, yeah. But there's the Academy and then there's the committee, and and I right. think it's also not explained very well no, to us quite, either. It's deep. There's just a ton of politics. I'm sure that go behind the it's scenes. Just like the whole music industry. Mm. Yeah, right. it's very confusing, and that's like a whole. Not- I could do a whole podcast on my right. thoughts about the whole music industry because, right, right, because right. Woodsy, you have a lot more structure in your industry than we do, and even more, yeah, equally like you know the joke at uh, the 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 Golden Globes that uh, Ricky Gervais did. You know, a Golden Globe can't be bought officially, but if they could, right. the man <laughs> exactly. to see will be Philip Burke, who that time was the, the head <laughs> well, of the Golden Globes. You know, it's exactly. Like- you know. Well, isn't it? Isn't it? Wasn't it Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio who never had been, who never won an Oscar for years, yeah. and yet yeah, he's one of the best name. actors, 
clearly across the board, we would hmm. all think Leonardo DiCaprio is an incredible actor. Yeah. Oh, what? He doesn't have a little golden globe, so he must be shit. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. we're also saying, you know, now we're introducing, uh, you know, uh, categories purposely in, in you know, the, the film and TV sphere to address underrepresentation. Obviously, we saw it in that, that first year where there was like, hey, you know, Oscar's so white. And then suddenly you're like, oh, yeah, we mm. should really nominate some, some films. But there you some, go. You know. You know but that's not happening right. in the music industry. It sounds like it sounds like it's basically kind of like, oh no, well, you know, we'll keep on doing things the same as they are. And in there needs case. to be more categories, in right? The Grammys. Right, yeah, right, right. I agree. It's just not. Um, but then at the end of the day, like, I care, but I don't care. You yeah. know, it's uh, in the same sentence. Sure. Yes. Sure, exactly. Sure. So the reason. But then I that's what about- stops us from yeah. from having progress progression too yeah and like, like apathy yeah. building is like being like i care but i don't really care like we should care because yeah. then we can build on that and we can grow and have better representation just, of the society we actually live in yeah otherwise yeah. we're just the apathy makes us numb and then we just end up voting for people like trump <laughs> yeah, and then now, and then look at us. Our whole country is divided because there's racists and then there's anti-racists. Exactly. And- this yeah. I just I like this conversation because the reason I enjoy this conversation is because there is no right or wrong answer. Mm. We don't know the ins and outs. We're not music pro- professionals. We're artists. We we just our job as it were was to write songs from the heart and then sing them from the heart and then deliver them from them from the heart but somewhere along the line we get caught up in the business side of it and the industry side of it and i can only say this with tons of experience under my belt years of living it coming up to my 18th year i finally have understood what is it that what what is it that i get happy for what, what, where do I derive my happiness from? If I put my happiness in the wrong places, I'm screwed. But if I put it in the fact that, wow, how beautiful is this? I get to sit by this microphone, write some songs, and there's a fucking millions of people out there who are going to listen to it at home, wherever they are, and it's going to be a part of their life forever. As long as that becomes my thing, it doesn't matter what happens outside of that. It doesn't matter. Mm. right mm. but if i was just like i must get this and i must get that in order to feel validated i'm probably screwed well a question i'd like to ask you both actually uh, and jay we were kind of talking about it before the podcast started about how you're deriving a lot of ple- pleasure pleasure these days from mm. uh, uh going on tiktok and actually like you're not making music, having a laugh you're having fun you're having fun with the notoriety that your career has given you uh you know kiki I have had personally had a conversation with you in a car about, you know, songs that uh, you've performed or created that you might necessarily not necessarily have <clears throat> wanted to do or you've had to do. But mm-hmm. then now, like, you know, your album, especially this, you know, the new one, Kiki Deluxe, out now, uh, is, yeah. um, is very representative of you and who you are. So, again, for both of you, you know, for... A, a young up and coming artist and an artist that already has had. Just say an old man. It's gone. An an old man. A a young girl (laughs) and an old man. You're not old. (laughs) Oh, we're just playing. Exactly. Um, What what was the pressures for both of you to write quote unquote hit songs or just to make the music that you want to make? Because surely that is, I mean, as a filmmaker (laughs) right now, I know that it's annoying when I have to compromise anything there. So what's it like for you guys? Kiana, we talk about this all the time. Oh, yeah. You lead it. Go. I want to hear. Yeah, you, yeah, you talk. You and Todd, come. I mean, <laughs> I think I'm honestly in that space right now. Like, I'm in this mm. this spot where I'm trying to figure out how I get to the next level because I want to buy my mom a beach house because mm-hmm. that's like her dream. <laughs> because and- <laughs> why shouldn't? You? And also, why the fuck shouldn't you be able to do that? Right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like, I want to buy my mom that beach house. Yes. Um, I want to buy my dad a new motorcycle. I want mm. to provide for my sister and like allow her to open her own salon. Like, I I want to do all these things. But like, you know, the music that I want to make right now is mm-hmm. not necessarily going to give me that side of my dreams. Mm-hmm. Right. And I also don't want to compromise that much. So I'm in the spot where I'm like, what is the most me mm-hmm. next level that I can get to? And how much can I compromise without it not being me anymore? Mm-hmm. 
Mm. So I've tried to find different avenues and different ways around that so that I can get the beach house, but still be Kiana. And then one day when I've made all the money I need to make and supported all the people I need to support and started all the charities I need to start, then I can really just focus on being like, fuck you guys. I don't have to listen <laughs> to anybody anymore. I'm going to make mm. whatever fucking music I want. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. No one talk to me anymore. I'm going to go in my beach house and make an acoustic RB album. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. But Kiana, it, I, everything you said is so true. And, uh, you know, I. <laughs> Do you care I can anymore, you, Jay? Do you no, care? I don't. I, 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 I'll get, no, no, no. I'll get into that. That's a whole other thing. Oh. But again, I, this is really about Kiana because you're here with us and I want to spend that time talking to you about it. But, you know, the greats. The fucking greats, your Whitney Houston's, your Michael Jackson's, your Stevie Wonder's, your Marvin Gaye's. If you look at their stories and you read their, their experiences and listen to their experiences, nobody, none of us are exempt from this very thing that you are going through and the same thing that I went through. We need a hit. Give us a hit. Eminem, yo man, I'm a real rapper. Nah, dude, keep doing that comedic thing you're doing because that's really working. People love it and the white people can really, really, you know, they feel like they can get into hip hop because of you. But I really want to show people that I'm a, I can battle rap. Yeah, there'll be a time for that. Everyone. <laughs> Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. Smash, no, sorry, Sexual Healing, Smash. You know what the next song he released was? A song that sounded just like Sexual Healing. <laughs> Mm. Mm. But we forget the music was the same, the basically the same instrumental. Mm. Cause guess what, Marvin Gaye? We need a song just like that. But I'm Marvin Gaye. Yeah. And the thing is, when you realize that everybody went through it, it's kind of that's why they call it the music business. Because right. it is a music business. It is a business. I remember I my one of my favorite artists in the whole world. Still one of my favorite vocalists, Music Soul Child. It's me. Oh, of course. You, I've told you many times, your voice is probably one of my favorite female voices. It is bonkers ever. live as well. I've, I've told you that many yeah. times. But Music Soul Child, right? I'm going to tell you that. Again, this is a story I've never told anybody. Music Soul Child's Just Friends was the, so the instrumental that I wrote my first ever real song to. And it was over the instrumental. And... Up until then, I was doing rap. I was doing hip hop. I wasn't doing, I wasn't writing a whole song. I wrote my first whole song to that. Um, great demo. It got me into the, um, it got me into Virgin Records building for a meeting with Virgin. We love this song. What else do you have? Oh, I got stuff like this. Then there came the big question. So what kind of artist do you see yourself as? What kind of music do you see yourself making? Who are, who is Jay Sean? And I said to them, I'll be honest with you. I really love music, Soul Child. I love that kind of neo soul music. I love that. That's like my heart. I get a big nudge under the table and a kick on my foot from the people who represented me at the time, basically saying, wrong answer. Don't Ooh. say that. Don't say that. They want to hear, I want to do pop music. They want to hear, I'm going to get sales. Yeah, I'm going to. Jeez, How dare you tell them what you really want to, right? <laughs> so it was really interesting. And I learned very early on that we as artists are so precious. I think in the industry, people always want you to be what you aren't. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that added extra pressure. And for someone like me, Jay, I'm sure you're like this too. Because we're so precious, we're also very hard on ourselves. And there's also at least fucking 10 people relying on me right. <laughs> for their next yeah. paycheck way more <laughs> what, what are you talking about way at more least than 10. at least yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. you know it's also like you don't want to let the people that you love down you don't want you know their families to go without their next rent check so yeah. what do you have to do make a fucking pop song so everyone can be happy and have their checks you know what you look at someone like beyonce okay if i say beyonce what's the first first song that comes into your head adam go uh could be anything don't think too hard just beyonce all right, wrong person. Todd, okay, yeah, oh, the single seriously. ladies. Oh, the yeah, single yeah. ladies. Yeah, I, was, I was trying to think of the title. I was going to sing There's it. So single many. ladies. That just popped yeah. in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Popped in my head too. Single yeah. ladies. Yeah. And to me, she ain't singing her ass off on that. She's not, yeah. she's not fuck, she's having fun. It's yeah. just, oh, the single lady. Everybody's having fun. It's just yeah. fun. It's bouncy, it's vibey. 
right? And, and, and yet, there could be like those music snobs who go, well, Beyonce is so much more than that. She's not really showcasing her voice. <laughs> Yo, maybe she's just having fun. Mm. Like, let uh, her have fun. That is the other thing, for sure. Go on. It's like, you have the, let's do pop, come on, let's get the mm-hmm. next blah, blah, blah. And then you have the people that are like, but what about when you sing at the piano? What about <laughs> an orchestra? What yeah. about this and get experimental? And you're oh. like, ah! I can't do both. <laughs> ah! That's what, that's what Kiki was. Kiki was like, right. okay, everybody just needs to shut the fuck up. Let me just think for one mm-hmm. second. Mm-hmm. And then I thought and made the album. Right. And go on, go on, Adam. Oh, oh, no, no, what no, I was no, going to no. say is, I, when you listen to it, and when you listen to your song, first of all, do you enjoy listening to your own songs? Yeah, I do, actually. Now I, I do. That. There's some songs I'm like, shut up. Turn it off. <laughs> we might not ask which ones. For the most part. <laughs> I want to know for afterwards what part. those songs are. <laughs> I need to know because it's so funny. Go on, for the most part, you I, enjoy I know listening to I know yours, Jay, but we're not, n- neither of us are saying this on, on a podcast because <laughs> that's, just, that's just death that we're going to ask afterwards. But but you know what, go on. It's really it's really funny because I love that you love listening to your own music because that's a beautiful thing. If you can't be proud of your own music and you love love listening to your own music, I watch my edits. Expect- I watch my yeah, films back. That's all the awesome. Time. Yeah. Yes. Todd, I'm sure you're proud of your mixes and yeah, just yeah. listen Sometimes. to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time where I didn't like listening to myself. But that's also because mm. I didn't like myself. I didn't like myself. Mm. I didn't believe in and, myself. I and didn't believe in the music I was making. Yeah. 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 So, and that's those are the so same deep. songs that I'm like, please turn that off. Like wow. the struggle that I was feeling at that time, that inner turmoil, and then that it's not reflected in the music either. And that the music is just not me. It makes me like feel gross. Like I'm like, ew, like t- t- who is that? Turn it off. Cause it's, it's not a me. trigger. It, it's a, literally a trigger for those emotions that you felt at the time. You hear yeah. that song and it's associated straight with how you felt at the time and it makes you, yeah. puts you in a bad place, right? Yeah. Or a not happy place. But the most important thing is you listen to the, the Kiki Deluxe right now and it makes you smile and you're happy and you're proud of it. I am. And that's- That shit is fire. Yeah. It's undeniable, I'm serious. Yeah, Thank it's a you. great album. It's a fantastic Go tell the Grammys that. Yeah, <laughs> fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of fun, happy places, we're introducing a new segment uh, into uh, our podcast. Oh, yes. Courtesy Perfect. of uh, <laughs> Barstool Sports. It's shout Ask the out. Internet. Yeah, shout oh. out to K- KFC Radio. Called Ask the Internet. Uh, thousands of questions uh, collated from uh, the most popular questions on the internet. So I'm basically, so now our guests and Jay are being pitted against one, one another, and, and Tolly Boy is going to be the, uh, the judge here. So I have a, a list of, of thousands of, of questions to mm-hmm. ask you. And I've Ooh. just basically grabbed a, a wedge. I'm going to do the best of five. So basically whoever gets uh, five points wins. So I'm just going to go through <clears> it quickly. <throat> so I'm just going to do a little quick shuffle. So wait, what's the, what's the rules again? So the rules are the... Yeah, the wait, basic, do we... Is it would you what, rather? It was a basic... No, it, it, yeah, it's like a would all, you all, all, all these, yeah, All these questions are would you rather, this section mm-hmm. are would you rather. So basically, I'm going to ask you both, and ju- uh, Todd will be the judge and arbiter of who he thinks is the best answer. <laughs> so okay. Todd, I need, I need you to collate got it. points. Okay, ready? Got it. Okay, so we're going to start off with a really simple one. Okay. I love these games. Go. Kiana, Jay, would you rather have a rewind button or a pause button for the rest of your life? Ooh. Uh, you, are you speaking metaphorically on my whole yeah. life? So, or are you so talking Im- about like- Im- imagine you can mash down a button and you can yeah. either like rewind or you can press pause and think about things like, hey, wait, do I want to answer oh, that? Okay, well, I don't well. So you, you need to pause. Or life. you can go back and, and redo things that you fucked yes. up. Yeah. That's pretty deep. Oh. Ooh. Which you'd rather have? Ooh. I know. Okay, go keep. Ooh. Uh, that's really hard. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, I know. The pause button, because. that way I could pause, think about, I'm a very impulsive person, so I could stop my impulsivity, impulsivity? Yeah, impulsivity. That yeah. the yeah. word? Okay, <laughs> great. Um, and think about what I'm going to do before I do it. And then also, I wouldn't be living in the past. I would still mm. be being present. I would just be <laughs> living in the present with a the pause. There we go. Yeah. So, Jay? 
they basically took my hold on. That's basically what I was going to say. I was going to say, Great same think thing. pause, stop, reflect, think, is this the right, am I just acting out of impulse or is this the right thing? I actually have implemented that a lot more. The pause thing in my life right now, so much more. Mm. And, um, the rewind thing for me is easy. I never let, ever, ever look back and go, oh, you know why? Because I was thinking about this. You know, when you look back, you go, like, fuck, shouldn't have done that. Ah, shouldn't have done that. Why did I drink so much that night? Shouldn't have done that. Why did I go to that? Per- why did I go there for that? Because guess what? At that time, you probably wanted to do it. Mm. You probably really wanted to do it at that time. So you wouldn't have done it. So, so I just don't believe in going back into the past. I believe in the future. So, anyway, let's go. Okay, so I, I feel like Todd. I mean, that feels like a draw, really. Yeah, I was yeah. hoping that someone would say rewind because that's what I like. What, what I know, I do. I do like the rewind just so I can experience some stuff again. You know, like, hey, that was awesome. Let's do that <laughs> again. How classic that again. these. We give like the really deep artist yeah, answer, yeah. and they were like, "Yo, oh, fuck no, love but." Like- yeah. You know what? My initial <laughs> thought was the rewind. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like, no, I'm not going to do that because I respect that too. Yeah. It's just not a good idea. I did the pause and thought about it before I did the rewind, Ooh. which actually is that you, you actually paused and thought about it. Okay. So yeah, moving on, yeah, yeah. would you rather walk with a rollerblade on your left shoe for the rest of your life or have an angry midget walking in front of you slightly slower than you want to go for the rest of your <laughs> life? <laughs> Wait, are we allowed to say midget? Well, I believe so. I mean, I mean, okay. I'll, I'll, no, I'll, little, little people. Person. Little, little, yeah. little yeah. person. People. Little person. Little person. Read that again. Would you rather walk with a rollerblade on your left shoe for the rest of your life or have an angry little person walking in front of you slightly slower than you want to walk for the rest of your life? <laughs> so you've got to stumble along with a fucking rollerblade or you've got to basically be... St- Come on, go, go! <laughs> Oh man! Could you become friends? You go with first, Jay. I went first. Last yeah, time. actually, yeah, exactly. That'd be yeah. nice. Yeah. Go on. What's that? You, go you want first. me to go, go first? first. Yeah. Um, I would do go with the rollerblade. Uh, can I ever take it off? Probably no. not. No. Okay, I'd go with that because I would probably learn how to, you know, <laughs> maneuver that shit and be <laughs> fast. Really that shit would be. You get good at that shit, right? Yeah. Um. Um. The, I would never be able to. The traffic, like that slow thing. Oh, that drives me crazy. Like when I get stuck behind a slow car. I cannot stand not being able to do something about that. So yeah, rollerblade for me. Yana? Yeah, it'd be the same for me. Just same. Ditto. Yeah. Okay. We need we need some tiebreakers because that's that. You we, can we... give it to Jay. You can give it to Jay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. All it's right. Because I did the explaining. Yeah. So I, I just said one. same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Here's, here's a controversial one. What do you think you spent more time on? previewing the porn you want to watch or actually watching porn Ooh. like you're, pick, you're picking is there's a smorgasbord of, of smart these days probably previewing mm. I, i've probably previewed my porn longer a lot or more than i've watched it because i've seen a lot of the same videos the ones that i like but like I've seen him too many times now, so now I have yeah, to find new things. But it has to be the right thing. It has to be like the other thing, but not the other thing. Oh, of course, <laughs> that's you such need, a girl answer. Yeah. That is such a girl answer. It's amazing. I love how even when it comes to watching porn, girls are more thoughtful yeah. and like emotional. Yeah, about and it. it can't. I don't want the acting. Like I don't know. Yeah. No acting. <laughs> I don't want a scene. Just get Yo. straight to it. <laughs> I'm and I want it like home video, like <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, please, no, You're stuck in the in the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Always makes me Jay. laugh about porn. Like, like, <laughs> why do they think we need a story? It's not like, like you got, like you're there, you're sort of, you're at it, you're doing the shit, you're doing your business while you're watching it, and then you just sort of stop and go, no way, what's gonna? <laughs> no, I need to see how this ends. <laughs> this is insane. This is gripping yeah. stuff, and yeah. I'm not talking about yeah. gripping that. Gripping that. So, like that's never happened. Neither has it ever happened that when you finally just orgasm and come, do you just carry on watching the porn no, you to just see stop. how it ends? You just fucking close your laptop and probably feel disgusted for a little bit and hate yourself. My and favorite. But <laughs> well, don't forget, we grew up in the era of VHS, mate. And I remember a friend, of, a friend of mine, lent me a video once. And I, I put it on and I couldn't, I couldn't start. I couldn't do anything with it. I went, and I handed it back and went, you didn't enjoy it? I went, no. I said, why? I went, well, because I realized just I was about to that when I put the video in, 
where it started is where you left off. That's so oh true. <laughs> yeah. That is just like, funny. Oh, when God. that thought's in but your head. But also, like, why is every normal scene stepbrother, stepsister, stepmom? Um, like, or mom, yeah. I don't want to see that. No, exactly. Why can't it just be normal? Like, yeah. two strangers, me. Like, why yeah. does it always have to be step? It makes it I so think, gross. Because I think that mm-hmm. personally this is getting on a deep one i think personally why, why is porn is such a personal thing right you literally watch it by yourself um <laughs> unless you were like when when we were kids we all discovered it at the same time yeah it was the first person in that class uh, who got hold of a porn we're like whoa uh, we were just watching it together it's getting both which getting is the weirdest together, male party like, in the world like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. this wow. is a solo activity <laughs> at best you know <laughs> right oh, God. and and so all those weird things that you don't want to admit maybe secretly you kind of watch those and goes oh yeah all right well nobody's gonna find out i think it's just a weird fetish thing right um there's something for everyone it's weird porn right. is weird anyway give me a tentacle yeah. um, so jay uh, todd you're gonna have to call a winner fear that, that we're, we're two for two at the moment uh, who had the better answer kiana all right three two okay so in that case we're back with you kiana Actually, okay. this, le- this leads on p- literally perfectly from that next that, that previous statement from Jay. Oh, Would you rather sit down with your parents and watch every sexual encounter you've ever oh, had God. or sit by yourself to watch a sex tape of the night that they conceived you? Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> no. So you either have to sit down with your parents and watch all the crazy shit that you've got no. up to. Or you have to no. watch your parents smash. You, you can't, you have to choose one. Okay, okay, okay. No! I'm going to choose. Yeah. I'm going to choose. This is it. This might be even grosser than the other one. I don't know. There's yeah. no right answer here because they both yeah. fucking suck. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's what she said. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I would choose watching the night that I was conceived only because there's a little catch here, okay? Uh-huh. I was conceived on a soccer field. So I'm assuming that I can distract myself by counting the chairs or something Mm, mm, on the field and like not really paying attention to what was going on. Wow. That's That's a good answer. Thank you. It's Jay. So your parents seeing every nasty, freaky thing you've ever done or you have to watch the night that you got conceived. This is the most disgusting thing I have ever. Don't blame thought, me. Blame the good people at Barstool Sports. Available from I Amazon.com. Thought, <laughs> my <the> one. <laughs> I thought my one was fucked up. Remember my my uh, my uh, you fall in a quicksand and your yeah. dick gets bitten by a snake scenario. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll, well, I'll tell you about that afterwards. Huh. Um, well, that could yeah. be the tiebreaker. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Yeah, there we go. Could be actually. And there's another one, the goat one. All right. So let's see okay. this one. Man, this is way too disgusting. Um, can I just pass on this and just fail? I mean, you can lose the point, sure. Yeah, I'll lose the and point. It's two. It's oh, yeah, you great. win. Well, it's three you two win. now. Now it's four two. So yeah, so he wins. Yeah. Okay, so Todd, who, who, who guess, who's the winner, man? <clears throat> we got Kiana with the lead and the winner. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh well. I never thought I would lose at a game of Would You Rather. Like that's yeah. my favorite game. That was the jam on the road. Because you couldn't yeah, answer the, the one about your parents. Yeah. 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 So yeah. What's going on? Gross. Your parents fucked you. Get it? That yeah. is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Kiana with the puns. Um, Thank you. That's nuts. Wow. That was oh, really yes. gross. I can't believe that was actually on um I know. those cards. And I'm looking forward I to. Can. Our, I'm looking forward to asking these questions where people we're not friends with and seeing what their reactions are. Yeah. Oh, it's that's a great amazing. way to meet people. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Um. All right, I'm just making sure that we've talked. We've fucking covered loads of lovely things. We did. Um, that's amazing. I love that. Keeks, did you like? Did you like that? You had fun. Yeah, it was great. And was great. as usual, we always ask people where can they find you on socials. What you got coming out now? What can they look forward to in the future? Um, the future. Uh, another album. I'm working on another album right now. So wow. that's great. Um, and you can find me. Everything's just my name at Kiana Lede. Awesome. And <laughs> you're working on a new album already after Deluxe? Damn, now you're yep. busy, huh? And I'm you're recording. Busy. So you guys are recording at the studio. Like you're going there in person. Or you're doing uh, We were. Stuff? Well, we were in Florida at Mike's house for a while. 
um, uh. for like two weeks. And then they came back and we did it at Jeremy's. Um, that's what she said. And <laughs> <laughs> and now we're kind of like for the holidays, taking a break a little bit and just kind of okay. reflecting on all the music we have so far. Sure. All right, guys. Well, love you loads. Um, this has been fun. Thank you. All right, darling. Listen, Thank all you of so you much. have a wonderful weekend. And we'll catch up in a bit, all right? Bye, Adios. Bye. Peace. Bye, darling. Bye, bye. guys. Bye, bye, bye.